this is bullshit. That's actually how machine translation used to work. Uh, these days, if you're using, you know, Google Translate or you're asking ChatGPT to translate something for you, it's using a neural network. Uh, but back in the 90s, when computer hardware wasn't strong enough to run neural networks efficiently, people were using statistical techniques. And the most famous of those statistical techniques is probably the IBM alignment models. These models worked in a couple phases. Uh, the first thing is when you have a sentence in your source language, you need to break it up into words. And in English, that's pretty easy. You just split it along the spaces. But in other languages, like, for example, Chinese, where spaces are more of a suggestion than they are a hard rule, breaking a sentence into words can be quite difficult. The next phase is to take your individual words and substitute them for a word in your target language. And you do this using some trained statistical model. I'm kind of glossing over a lot of detail here. But obviously just substituting the words isn't going to give you a valid sentence in your target language, right? Because different languages put things in different orders. So the next phase is you need to take those translated words and you need to rearrange them. And I think this clip is a pretty good visual example of what that looks like. That description assumes that your source sentence has a one-to-one -one word mapping with your target sentence. And that's not always the case. Very often, multiple words will become one word or one word will turn into multiple words. And the IBM alignment models, some of them are complicated enough to handle that using something called fertility. But I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I think this is a good example of what I've always found interesting about natural language processing which is the subfield of AI to do with human language. I've always been more fascinated by the statistical approaches because the statistical approaches require you to think about how a human brain solves that problem so that you can replicate it mathematically. And by doing that, you actually gain insight into how the human mind processes language. By contrast, neural models typically start with you creating some kind of neural network architecture hopefully inspired by the human brain, and then just feeding it a bunch of raw data and hoping that it figures it out. And while that performs amazingly well, that is the entire reason we've had an AI revolution over the last 20 years, it performs very well. But the irony to me is that by trying to more accurately represent how a human brain works biologically, we've kind of lost that insight into the processes that are happening inside of it. And I think that's a little bit sad.